Good morning. As we go through these news stories today about how poorly U.S. and allied weapons systems are performing on the battlefield, a few rhetorical questions pop up. For example, what percentage of our so-called precision weapons can miss their targets before they can't really be described as precision weapons anymore? And if our smart bombs are easily confused by Russian electronic interference and they blow up somewhere else? Or if Russian electronic countermeasures can spoof a target and the bombs hit instead something that the Russian soldiers want us to hit? Are we allowed to call those things smart bombs anymore? What percentage of our precision weapons need to miss? How many of our smart bombs get confused before we have to start using other words to describe these systems? Because that's where we're at right now. Troops in the Ukraine are fighting for their lives, losing almost everywhere. And they're going around the world begging for help, for money, for weapons. But when a bunch of trucks show up full of American or NATO bombs and missiles, the Ukrainian troops say, no thanks, send these back. We don't want these. They can't hit anything. In World War I, pilots were in biplanes, two wings, one on top of the other. The pilots would shoot at each other with pistols, and they would fly over enemy lines and drop hand grenades on them. And that strategy was more effective, more accurate, than what we're doing in the Ukraine right now, a hundred years later. Over the weekend was a big news dump led by the Washington Post and the New York Times. The Ukraine's battlefield reports and intelligence assessments were classified, but shown to some reporters from the Washington Post. When our weapons were first brought into the conflict in the Ukraine, everything was fine. But then Russia figured out how to beat them. And it's now so bad that the Ukrainian military stopped using them. Two particular weapons platforms in focus are the Excalibur, which is a 155 millimeter artillery round, and the other is our GLSDB, which is a ground-launched small diameter bomb. Russia is using electronic warfare to drown out the signals our weapons receive from satellites. Our smart systems need to coordinate with satellites to work properly, and Russia has figured out how to interfere with all those signals. Anything dependent on GPS to work is a problem now including JDAMs, our direct attack munitions, and our HIMARS systems. The GLS bomb has a long range. It's more like a rocket, actually, and the Ukrainians have stopped using it, too. And for the Excaliburs, researchers studied 3,000 launches through nine months in three different areas of operations, and they confirmed that the accuracy has collapsed. The high was 55% which doesn't seem very high in the first place, and went eventually to just 6% by August. At one point, only one out of 19 Excalibur rounds was hitting the intended target. Excaliburs are expensive, so when they miss, we need more of them to destroy a target. The cost of a mission goes up, and by August, it was nearly $2 million, over six times the cost previously. So the Ukraine gave up using them eventually and now prefer unguided artillery instead. This is a report from Defense One from last December, the first publication we found which reported the problem in public. Russian jammers were already successful in hacking our drone systems, and they can block our GPS satellite signals up to 15 miles away. And now they're successful against our guided bombs and artillery. And they do this in two ways. Jamming is the first, and it's simply flooding the air with a lot of radio signals in the direction of the weapon, strong signals that overwhelm the onboard navigation systems. Spoofing is another procedure that overrides the targeting information itself and sends the weapon off into a different direction. And in advanced applications, spoofing can even be used to hit targets that the spoofer once hit. So jamming causes the munition to get lost and blow up somewhere else, just anywhere else. Spoofing can send the ordnance somewhere specific. Jamming is cheaper, and here's that precision word again, twice. Our precision systems are seeing shockingly decreased precision. Russia's tactical electronic warfare system is called the Pole 21, and it's pictured here. 
which right away we can see is a mobile system. And the Eurasian Times takes on the story from the angle of how the Russian systems work, how it was developed very recently and is very adaptive. In this diagram, they point out that the Pole 21 gets busy right away, as soon as it detects an inbound launch, and that at vulnerable points during the weapon's flight, especially after it reaches apogee, Pole 21 can blast radio signals directly at the projectile as it approaches the target, and it gets confused and lost. Daniel Pat is an expert analyst, and he's quoted in several of the sources here, explaining the management part of the problem, the bureaucratic aspect. Here in the New York Times, he says that Defense Department isn't moving nearly fast enough. Electronics life cycles in the Ukraine are three months before the Russians have figured out how to kill it. Peak efficiency is only two weeks. Forbes quotes Pat's report again, where he says we cannot expect our weapons systems to follow waterfall processes. This part's important. Waterfall is a project management system. Here's what waterfall looks like, and you can see where the moniker comes from. There are five steps, and you cannot proceed to the next step until the previous one is completely satisfied. Waterfall and Agile are two sort of competing project management systems and software development especially. Pat here is saying that the Pentagon relies on waterfall, and that's not nearly fast enough or adaptive enough to help anyone if Russia can figure out how to jam a system after just two weeks. Zero Hedges estimates are about 10%. 10% accuracy, which would be weighted across the different weapon systems here. These systems are all dependent on GPS signals and can be easily jammed by Russian forces and very cheaply besides. Defense One points out that the Ukraine war is an intelligence bonanza for the United States because the US and our allies are learning how our smart weapons are doing against the real world threat of rival nations. Could just as easily flip that take around that rival nations are also enjoying an intelligence windfall and they're learning in real time too. And they're sharing, no doubt, what they've learned. 10%. And remember, our missiles aren't getting shot down by other missiles, which would cost them a lot of money. All they're doing is turning a radio transmitter on and pointing it up to the sky where they know our bombs are gonna be. Here is Hunan. Be good.